good morning. In this video, I'll be pulling apart 70 odd palettes in four days with a total of 400 palings worth keeping. This video is going to be a bit different from what I usually do. It will be mostly time lapses and a bit of talking over the top. Also a bit of a discussion about the palette shortage and is it wrong for me to be pulling apart all these palettes? Thanks for mowing the lawn for us dad, it saves us a lot of time. Day one, I am starting with the 15 I already have in the yard. I cut the end stringers off all of the palettes. Full disclosure, I didn't do this in four consecutive days. It was a bit spread out due to the amount of flood rain we have been getting lately, which is probably a good thing because if I did this all in one go, it probably would have killed me. My husband brought some presents home for me. I will definitely drink the energy drink, but I am not wasting these new blades on this job. Three stringer palettes are really easy to dismantle. The last few are four stringer palettes and I hate these. But palettes are scarce so I can't be too picky. We went for a swim in the river so I put some shorts on afterwards. It's only now I realise how much of a dag I look. For these I just pry them with a long bar. I don't like this method because you have to be a bit more careful not to split the palings. I've got some middle stringers, some outer edge stringers, and quite a good start for palings, and just a little bit of scrap. While I clean up the stringers, Owen brings in the rest of the palettes for the following days. I was searching for ages for more palettes. All of the usual places that save them for me have decided they are going to reuse them. Yes, even the old softwood ones. I'm not sure if you'll ever see this, Tony, but thank you so much for bringing a full truckload of palettes out for me. Time to get started on day two. My goal for today was to get all the lids processed. Because these are so low to the ground, I grabbed a few pallets to use as a bench. These have been kept under cover, so they are nice and dry. They were used to transport phone books, which I didn't know people still used. school work time. Time for a break. There is something really nice about having a fire while you work. Time to swim in the river. The nails in the palettes are a lot softer and have a thinner shank to the ones I usually deal with. I found with these it's best to just let the tops bend over a bit, giving you a larger, stronger area to hit down on. Hey, I made a cross. I could sell this. No, really, this one here is $60 plus $80 postage for two palings, some old barbed wire and a bit of toilet paper. And this one over here will cost you $130 after postage. Day two is over and gave me this many palings and a bit more scrap than I would have liked but I really can't use the boards that have splits all the way along them. Day three. A bit of a late start today because I was helping dad with a tree that came down in the storm. The sky is looking crazy, I don't know what we're in for today.
The rain is back. After the storm last night and more rain today, these once dry pallets are no longer dry. One day I will have a proper shed. Thanks for doing the lawn again, Dad. One stack down and this many palings. Sun is out and I'm getting the ends cut off the next stack. I can tell by the way my hair is that I am worn out. I'm running on half the amount of caffeine today and tomorrow I am giving it up for a bit. Done for today and a few palings to put in the shed. Day four, I want to get these two stacks done and not have caffeine. And I already regret giving it up. Okay, let's talk about this pallet shortage. I don't get out much, so when I first heard about the shortage, I just assumed everyone was really getting into reclaimed wood DIYs or something. That's not the case. So with all the articles I read through from the perspectives of different parts of the supply chain, it basically all came down to... I'll just mention the main dot points, but I will link to all the articles below. Let's start with the large supermarkets like Coles and Woolworths. These supermarkets need more pallets as they have full warehouses of goods that have been stuck in lockdown that they can't access. And the hardwood pallet companies rely on their pallets being returned as these are reusable and go back and forth circulating for many years. The supermarkets are also stockpiling even more in anticipation of more supply issues. Apparently almost 50% of the pallets that are meant to be in circulation are not being returned. But there are other companies that need pallets as well. All your small businesses and suppliers that need to move their products but aren't getting prioritized. So they are going to other pallet companies to see what they can get. And unfortunately, they can't keep up with the demand either for two reasons. The pallet companies need to make more pallets. But there has been forestry lockups in Victoria that weren't meant to happen until the year 2030. Bushfires, oversights and illegal logging are all part of this. Okay, so what if they go elsewhere for lumber? Well, lumber prices have gone up exponentially because of shortages everywhere. So how does this affect softwood pallets and why is there also a shortage of those? Let's look at rural stores as an example, since my husband has worked at three different rural stores over the last 15 years and has seen this firsthand. In normal times, a softwood pallet is worth nothing to anyone when you have a ton of fertilizer costing over $1,000. No one wants to pay the transit costs on returning a cheaply made pallet that they already tacked the price onto the original sale anyway. But as we know, pallets are scarce, so these companies are now asking the rural stores to hold onto the pallets for them. Hence the reason for the softwood pallet shortage as well. Legally, softwood pallets can be reused as long as it is safe to do so, meaning no split or damaged palings, no protruding nails or missing boards. Before this shortage, I was spoilt for choice with pallets, and I'm still very lucky to get my hands on these. But as you can see, these pallets have some split palings and were not able to be used again. But now I can use them. 
Hope you found this video interesting. I learned a lot these last couple of days trying to find out why it's so hard to get old palettes. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.